We give you our lives, our hopes, our dreams, our thoughts, and our words. We ask that we would be glorious representatives of you. Um, thank you for wonderful services in your house yesterday. We would ask for your blessing on your word this day, that you would teach us in a transforming way so that we can teach others. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning, all. Amen. Go welcome with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we Good can... morning. Good to see you all. <laughs> Glad you could join us. And uh, we're in, we're getting closer and closer to Jerusalem and the triumphant entry and how glorious it is that the Lord Jesus has laid out his steps through the authorship of, of, of Luke. Um, we are, we are truly blessed and overwhelmed by the, your goodness as laid out in this, uh, in this time and space and you are glorious Lord just getting my act together here and uh, so we're in a very common segment of the book of Luke and so common that sometimes common because becomes commonplace and when we do that we when we know things by ritual and by rote, we sometimes miss what they are at the heart. So we're going to do this uh, in traditional New King James first, and then we may bounce to some other place where where we can uh, where we can hear what the Word of God says. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning, Linda. Welcome with us. Um, Hi, guys. So. He's, he's now going toward Jerusalem, going toward the triumphant entry. Um, um, we can understand that because we got 2,000 years later. The disciples don't know that he's going toward the triumphant entry. The disciples don't know. They haven't really figured out that there's going to be a crucifixion and whatever. And, um, but how cool it is that we can view this in light of like his last Sometimes you want your last words to be, you know, the most memorable. Um, and anyway, I've talked too much. We're in Luke 11. We're going to try it in New King James this morning. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. We're glad you're with us. Hi, We're glad you're with us. We're glad you're with us. Yes, which is getting started. We're uh, in Luke chapter 11. We're going to try the New King James. And taking it from the top first one. So Luke 11, 1, NKJV. The model prayer. Now, it's nice that they named it the model prayer. Good morning. Uh, often referred to as the, the, um, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but it's really not the Lord's Prayer after all. <laughs> First, well, we're going to see that it asks that we be forgiven of sins. And he had no need of asking that. Uh, so verse, this is the model for, this is the prayer that the disciples come to him and ask him, teach us to pray. John's disciples were being taught by John. He wants, uh, the, the request here is that the Lord, uh, teach us how to pray. So it's really the prayer for the disciples. That's right. Uh, and, and it begins. And for me and you. Now it came to pass. Yes. Come, it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Okay. So, so he said to them, when you wait, pray. Wait, 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 let's, let's pause there. So, so it's like they're, they're huddled around him, trying to give him his own space so that he can finish his prayer. And then he kind of pops up there and, and he stopped praying, and they say, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. But some of these disciples of the Lord Jesus had been disciples of John. But John's prayer life is radically different than the Lord Jesus, because John is praying, um, you know, come Messiah, take care. But, but Jesus reflects that also in his, quote, Lord's Prayer. Um, so... Teach us to pray. I mean, we're we're three 
three years into his ministry here, and and they probably have asked him to teach them to pray also, but you would think that they've mastered prayer by now. But you and I know that we never master prayer. We get we we walk in the spirit, we pray in the spirit, and then and then it comes out of our mouths. Um, so uh, look, now we can go down to verse two. Uh, so he, the Lord, said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. So New King James does it a little different than what we than what we have traditionally prayed from the King James, but um, I like I like that we should talk about this. So it starts with our good morning, Crystal. Welcome with us. It starts with our Father. So if He's my Father and your Father and your Father and your Father and your Father. And your father how amazing it is because that makes us siblings <laughs> that that we have the same father in heaven you know red and yellow black and white uh, he is precious so so our father is a, a, an, a, uh, an astonishing word to this Jewish um, to these Jewish disciples that are hearing that are having their eyes opened all over the place about who God is and about what their relationship with um, that the that the Lord Jesus would pray our Father uh, is astonishing because the the Jewish people did not have really really a father relationship with God Almighty they had a, a kind of a judge um, relationship kind of a uh, a righteous relationship but not really a father and child relationship like we see in the New Testament and particularly after the resurrection so the yeah. Lord Jesus teaches them to pray our father which is incredibly elevating to the disciples because he Jesus has called his father father and he Jesus has called the disciples, father, father. <laughs> so, so the linkage there, you know, that makes us uh, that makes us all brothers and sisters. Um, good morning, good morning. Glad you're with us. So, when you pray, say, "Our Father, which art in heaven." Um, so, so God, um, God is in the heavens. God is in the earth. God is, God is in in the. He's controlling the orbit of the sun. He's holding stuff together. He is in heaven in the sense of that is where his his palace is. But he's not limited to just being in the third atmosphere or whatever we say about that. God is all everywhere, all the time. Um, and there are big words that say that, but it's easier to say it in the smaller words. God is in every part of the universe at all times from the, from, from the time that time began until the end of time. Um, our God is an awesome God. And, then, and that takes us down to line two. Yeah, that's, that's not to say, however, I should point out, I mean, in uh, the Eastern perspective, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, so well, Hinduism anyway, uh, actually sees things. They they too believe God is in everything and so forth, but they that means that they actually see things and um, animals and etc. as divine. Right. We're not saying you know we're not saying uh, the things that God created are divine. They are His product, of course. Uh, but uh, God is uh, is with us in this in His creation. That's right. Um, that doesn't make His creation deity. That's right. 
temptation there would be to worship the uh, worship the creation, which is exactly what <laughs> what we don't want to do. We want to focus on Him per se, that's right. and that's what these first couple of verses are doing. I begin. I mean, I mean, think about it. it. Begins our first of all, very first word. He's including the, the disciples immediately in this prayer, the very first word. And as what? If he was addressing Father, I mean, father, then the, then we must all be siblings and children, right? And the, and where? He's in heaven. So now he's linked. He's already linked the earthly with the heavenly. But that again, that's not to make the earthly divine per se. It's just that there's, it's establishing that connection. And then how would be your name? Uh, the, the calling upon the name of the God, uh, name of the Lord or calling or even referencing his name. I don't know if we make enough of that. We do it all the time. We worship your name. We sing about it, etc. But to call on the name of the Lord is to take him in his totality is to take him, his whole realm, everything about him is considered uh, when you take his name. It sounds like it's singular, singular, <laughs> singling him out uh, individually, but it's quite the opposite. It is taking in the totality of what he is what he, uh, and all that he is. Right. And how do we want to re- uh, keep him hallowed, okay? Uh, and, and uh, sanctified above it all, so to speak. Yeah, we don't use, we never use hallowed in English, you know, in all my life. The only time I use this word is when I'm praying this prayer. But it, holy is your name, honorable is your name, unbelievable is your name, uh, uh, respectful is your name. I mean, the the hallowed there is a, um, it's a radical word for us, but holy, but let's use holy because it's more, more how we use words. Well, it's kind of nice, too, that the word hallowed is uh, sort of uh, uh, kept in reserve for this particular application, you know? Yes. Part of the way to keep, it, keep, it, keep him hallowed, to keep him holy, is to separate him from the banal, from the, um, banal, the uh, ordinary. That's right. And so we've got a special word to do just that. That's, I, I mean, that's what, my life, that's what I like about the word. Anyway. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. So the kingdom of God, remember the Lord Jesus has opened up the kingdom of God to these disciples already, but he hasn't really gone to the cross. It hasn't been resurrected yet. So um, the coming of the kingdom is radically around the Lord Jesus. Now we're talking about the second coming. Um, the Lord comes back in, in power and might and whatever. But the Jews are praying for the kingdom to come, meaning the second king, the second return of Christ, um, to to honor, to honor, to take them out of all this trouble, <laughs> um, that God would be honored in this new kingdom, yes, but that they wouldn't have that they wouldn't have um, over over overruling rulers or. I, I, uh, I could probably figure out how to say that better if I thought about it more. So, th- thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So, yeah, it's your kingdom that he's they're calling. He's calling for not the worldly kingdom and not the king, not to, uh, a kingdom that replaces the world. He's not focusing on that. your kingdom. Remember, Jesus said, you know, the, uh, the king, wherever he is, the kingdom is at hand. That's right. It's not, you know, buildings and uh, roadways and uh, a lot of uh, worldly uh, uh, structures. It has to do with uh, the Lord himself. Amen. Amen. As far as we're concerned, uh, the front door and the palace to the kingdom itself. (laughs) And entering there and entering into his kingdom uh, is to say... uh, well, when we, for next verse, your will be done. Well, where is it going to be done more so than in the kingdom, of course? So to be him with him, the unity of the phrases that bring the kingdom and the will of God together uh, and focusing on him, Amen. your will, your kingdom, okay? 
And we're essentially saying, we want to be part of it. We want to be right there with you. Because the next verse confirms that on earth as it is in heaven. We want to see your will, your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And the disciples were having real trouble with understanding the will of God compared to their own will. They wanted it done this way, and the Lord keeps doing it that way. And we can be critical of them for that, but that's how we view it too. Okay, God, let me lay this out for you, God. This is first step, and then the second step, and then the third step. And he goes, no, I will do what I will do in my way that brings me the glory. We're called to continue to pray, but we don't have to delay it out for God. He's got it all figured, and he's not overwhelmed with my situation or yours on earth as it is in heaven. So verse 3. Yeah, give us day by day our daily bread. That's right. We pastor preachers about this so often that there's days, days coming where our daily bread may not be on the grocery shelves. Our daily bread may come just from our relationship with God Almighty. Now, in America, for the longest time, having daily bread on the shelves was, we take it for granted. And then COVID hit, and there were days that there were literally huge segments of the grocery store where there was no food. Um, and you think, wow. And it could happen. It could happen in a, in a, in a heartbeat. And so, day by day. So, oh, uh, when my kids were yeah, little, cool. we were... Probably- I was shocked when... I heard about COVID uh, when I was in Florida. The first very, the first announcement that had come to the continent. And I remember thinking this, the message, uh, you know, I'm hearing it on the radio. Uh, and immediately the next newscast is that the um, certain stock items were sold out instantly in Seattle, Washington. It was already na- nationwide that uh, that uh, we were, the supply chains were already being strained in an instant. It was so, it was amazing. Yeah. Anyway. So we, we were, my kids were little, we prayed, you know, blessing over the meal and uh, God, they said, well, why, why do we need to ask God for our daily bread? I mean, which is a legitimate question for a kid because you go to the grocery store and there's bread. So I said, well, what happens if God holds holds off the rain? I hadn't even known about COVID. And he'd go, I could see in his head, the rain doesn't fall, the grain doesn't grow, the truck doesn't come by and pick up the grain, the truck doesn't come by and take it to the factory to make it into bread, and the truck doesn't come by to to come to our shelves. And about again, they say, give us such day our daily bread. Like they thought through the linkage that happens to get the stuff from the grain to the store, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive mm-hmm. our sins. Uh, what an amazing um, thing to lay mm-hmm. out the disciples with. Forgive our sins. As yep. we forgive those who, f- for, uh, for we also forgive everyone who's indebted to us. And lead us mm-hmm. not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Wow. Yeah, the, uh, the whole petition part of the prayer begins with verse three. Yeah. Give us, forgive us, uh, and do not lead us into temptation. Deliver us. It's the way that it concludes, but it's the entry to the prayer that, um, you know, it's not like we start, how, how often do we start with the, uh, with the shopping list for the <laughs> Lord? <laughs> uh, Lord, I need. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Like he doesn't know this. <laughs> but uh, it's important. I think the structure of the prayer, you can see how uh, we set our relationship in right proper order at the beginning here. Uh, and we understand his sovereignty, that, that he's uh, he's a king we're talking to, yes. as well as our father. Uh, and he is hallowed. He is, um, he is sanct- sanctification personified. That's right. 
And, you know, this, this is the understanding we have. This is, we, we, we were showing him, we understand this perspective. You are God. We are mere <laughs> mortal men. <laughs> Nonetheless, and then within that context, um, your will be done. We know, we believe that your will is that we do be provided for. Uh, but we reiterate those things that are of, of importance to us. Um, uh, bread for sustenance, forgiveness of sins for proper relationships, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, trying to steer clear of temptation that takes us over our heads. Yes. Uh, and ultimately, this prayer. Now, it's amazing how many versions drop this last verse. The other Bible versions yeah. do not include this. Uh, deliver us from the evil one. Amen. So the Corinthians tells us that there'll be a way of escape, that we won't be tempted beyond what we can do because there's a way of escape. And, and, I've, and I've watched this out in my own life. There's a, there's a place where you're straying close to, and all of a sudden there's a way of escape. Or there's, a, there's, there's incredible pressures on you to do the, oh, there's a way of escape. So it's astonishing how how good God is at protecting us and giving us like a last chance to not do evil uh, because there's a way of escape. Um, just because we are overcomers does not mean at all that we need to figure out how close it is we can get to evil. Uh, <laughs> flee evil, you know, walk in grace and flee evil and lead us not into temptation. And what an incredible linkage that is between the Corinthians verse that says, he will provide a way of escape. Um, so it's not that there's no temptation around us, but when temptation comes, there's a way of escape. And, and how cool that is. Uh, what an amazing... It's interesting, it's interesting that the Pope... Uh, well, I don't know how recent it was, probably over a year now, uh, restructured that second to the last uh, verse here. Do not lead us into temptation with the idea that uh, God doesn't tempt. Right. That temptation is something that's within us. It comes as a matter of having free will. Yes. Uh, and therefore, uh, I, uh, frankly, I can't remember what the new wording is, but um, it's, uh, it's an interesting adjustment to the prayer. Uh, they came from the Vatican. That's, anyway, Lord have mercy upon him. Um, we have we have uh, glossed over this incredibly important prayer. We may pick it up again tomorrow. Lord, we thank you that you are our Father. We thank you that you are the forgiver of our sins. We thank you that you are the one that puts bread on the table. Lead us, lead us into your joy and peace and power. Let us live victoriously, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you, particularly for these words, these very words that, are, that uh, talk about the very thing we're doing, to pray to you, to uh, connect to the, uh, to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you. Yeah. Um, the big, the big linkage. Uh, that keeps everything in line and going properly. And that we may come to understand this more fully yes. and in greater depth uh, that we may um, realize the value in investing the effort in, uh, in a, a proper relationship through prayer with you. Yes. Help us Lord, to, to drill, on, drill down on this continuously yes. that we may... Uh, that we may ever grow in proper uh, stance yeah. with you, to your praise and glory. In Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. amen. Have a blessed day, all. You are loved. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>